you know, if you told some kid in the 80s at the height of Star Wars that, oh, yeah, they're going to have these streaming shows that are going to explore the Star Wars universe and nobody's going to watch them, you're like, what the hell are you talking about? Star Wars is awesome. Luke and the Millennium Falcon and Vader and the Stormtroopers, and it's like, it's cool as hell, all this, all the ships and stuff. And you go, and then they show the kids some of these streaming shows. You're like, that doesn't look like Star Wars. Oh, you just must be an istophobe. Yeah, yeah, a little eight year old uh, playing with the Millennium Falcon is is istophobic. It's like this isn't Star Wars. Nazi says what? Um, click the links, and you'll have clicked the links. So Star Wars Acolyte. I actually forgot about this show. They've got a uh, Andor Star Wars, and and they had a. I mean, they get the Mando, and then they, they they there's like four or five shows, Star Wars streaming shows that are out. That nobody's watching. Not even the, you know, the 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 far left wing Twitter kids who love to argue in defense of a billion dollar corporate Disney about how how diverse and inclusive, and Star Wars is like yeah, all those are crap values. That that's just that's garbage. That makes horrible shows. I mean, the the example is the shows themselves that that nobody are watching. Oh, well, you're all just, it's, but you guys are, yeah, yeah, we're syphobic, yeah, whatever. But you guys aren't watching the shows either. You never do. What, and whenever these these diverse, inclusive movies come out, nobody watches them. It's like the left wing has enough of numbers to actually make, they wanted to make these shows successful. They very much could. If they wanted to see Bros or Charlie's Angels or Terminator, um, you know, with the woman edition, all this other crap that comes out. It's like, how come you guys aren't watching the shows? Well, well, because my boyfriend drags me to the movies and it's like, yeah, yeah, that's the reality on the ground is that boyfriends drag their girlfriends to movies. And for some reason, uh, these left wing Twitter idiots don't want to admit any of this kind of stuff. Honestly, it's, it's just like it, the also tiresome meme is so freaking great. Picturing that guy now, there's another meme I posted on a, my other, one of the various other channels. It's this guy who's, who's smoking a cigarette and it starts to rain and he just keeps it's this Chinese guy. And he, like everyone's running around, putting newspapers over their head and trying to gather rain. And he just keeps smoking a cigarette in the rain. It's like, Oh God, that's just so freaking perfect. And, um, apparently if you say Chad and based, which I say all, all the time, you're going to be on an FBI watch list. Imagine not being on an FBI watch list. I mean, you're not like if you're over Target, you're catching flack, and then you, you look at the, you look at these groups and realize, ah, these are the worst groups on earth. These these are um, is this what the founding fathers warned us about? Is this the tyranny? Yeah, pretty much. So, um, Star Wars Acolyte is one of the many shows on uh, on Disney that nobody is watching. Imagine paying for Disney or Amazon or all this other crap by these. Just these absolute demon people. All right, so trigger warning: this guy's wearing eye makeup. Um, that's a that's a, not any. So this is the new face of Star Wars, wearing um, eye m- makeup for some reason. Oh, that's really disturbing. The whole thing is disturbing. Honestly, that's Star Wars twenty twenty three. Yeah, that pretty well sums it up. Um, so he raises an interesting issue about moral relativism and the failure of a diverse society. And whoever wrote this article, John Trent, maybe John Trent usually writes the more nuanced articles. Um, it's, it's, it's a fascinating topic. It's a great topic, but he's forgetting like a movie has certain physical constraints about getting people in and out of theaters. And um, it, these kind of topics are fun to explore for sure, but they don't make good movies. That's just the bottom line. Like you're, a movie is you're either selling a streaming subscription or you're selling a, a ticket to a show. It's like that is what it is. You can't do everything in a movie. That's why everything has to be simplified. So a complex idea like the stuff they're talking about is usually going to be is definitely going to be expressed best in writing. And then people can get together and discuss the, the writings. A movie is a a massive simplification, especially something that's called Star Wars or Battle Among the Stars. If you saw those movies that came after that were a lot of fun with the the spaceship that had boobs on it for some reason. The thing is, it has to be boiled down to to right-hand path, blonde soldier of the light, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Skywalker versus sinister path, dark fallen angel, Lucifer, Anakin as Vader. Because it has to be a two-hour film. The ideas behind it, for sure, would fill a bookshelf. It could be a lifetime of scholarship. But people can only sit in a theater so long. So the, the core has to be that blonde Luke goes on a journey. He learns, he matures, he overcomes challenges. He redeems the soul of the fallen angel back to the path of the god light. There was some nuance in that a mature Luke wears black robes, hinting at some moral complexity. And 50 years later, I look back at that and maybe would have gone the Lord of the Rings style with Gandalf revealing himself to be the white and not the gray. It was in the center movie where he meets the, um, 
Aragon, um, the dwarf Gimli, I think, and the the elf. And he starts off with the voice of uh, uh, Saruman, I think. It's the you know the deep the deep voice and he's shining white and then he pulls back his cloak and it's a trip. The thing is, the difference is Lucas is not religious and, and Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were with, you know, their various, uh, Lewis's various stories also. I think they made a, a movie about, about him. The guy who wrote the Chronicles of, of Narnia among others, um, or the fellowship of grass or something. I have one of his weird books on my shelf. And the thing is like, they made the movie and say, so you can explore his, his Christianity, his Catholicism. It was an integral part of his, no, nah, not so much. We're just going to skip over that. Huh. Oh, fascinating. Anyway, so what modern Star Wars is now is the rainbow cloak of many colors, which sounds cool, not to be confused with Dolly Parton's great song, but it re- represents uh, something very sinister. Who does the wearer of this illusion actually represent? Well, he can represent different interests to different people, a chameleon. Star Wars is showing you why globalists can't tell stories and why nationalists can. It's the, I mean, a lot of this boils down to those two concepts of, of, um, of, of what I, I, I say like all the time. It's like the simple concept of drawing a circle around your tribe and saying, this is us. You're on the outside of us. This story is, is for us. And the, the globalists can't abide that. They have to subvert, corrupt, and destroy and it really does boil down to that where like blood tribe stories, family stories make sense because there's continuity to them where global stories come across as just propaganda because they're very, very shallow because globalism itself is like a hundred year old concept. It is a very shallow concept. And every time you see it in execution, well, it usually deals with a lot of executions and well fertilized fields. It doesn't sell to people. It doesn't have very similar to the only suspension of disbelief. It just doesn't connect with people in a way that um, these blood tribal stories do because there's a much longer history of, like, are you, you know, family's a, family's a far-right dog whistle now. It's like, okay, fine, challenge, challenge accepted, sign, sign me up for that. The thing is, um, the Star Wars stories now are the equivalent of, like, Facebook Canada going to war over Chase Bank, Amerifat. Both former nations are now just economic zones run by NGOs. So what exactly are they fighting for? The fight, the right to be oppressed by a globalist run Canada or the equivalent, but with an American accent. What's the point? They both hate free speech. They hate civil rights. Both sides would, or the American side, your government, America, um, would burn the Constitution if they could. They absolutely, like the Bill of Rights, the, the idea disgusts them. The founding fathers disgusts them. And no, there's no turning uh, this ship around. There are other options on the table. Uh, uh, America's... And the West in general is probably going to get very, very spicy. So um, both nations would be teaming up, would be better teaming up and removing their governments and starting over. I mean, there are constitutional provisions, at least for dealing with uh, uh, such things in America. It's like how they're pushing for involvement in Ukraine to save democracy, where Zelensky shuts down churches, he arrests Catholic priests, he shuts down the press. And um, some people are allowed to escape the country, but then others have to get drafted to fight and die in a war for the war pigs. If that's a democracy, then you can have it. Russia has a bit more respect for churches, so I like more people on our side are rooting for, for Russia, but really, I think most people are rooting for America to just not get involved in wars in former Europe. Again, like, what are you fighting for? Or proxy wars in the Middle East, or wars in general beyond our border, as the Founding Fathers warned against being the world's policemen, but... Thank God for 1914. Ah, you skipped something. 1914 and the start of endless wars and the taxation to pay for them. What happened one year before night? Ah, the Federal Reserve, 1913, and then the endless wars and then the endless um, inflation and the devalue of the dollar over the past hundred years. All started, that aspect of it all started in 1913. Did the Founding Fathers warn us about being the world's policemen and, and leaving the borders of the country to fight these wars? At least staying within the new world? Yeah, they did. <laughs> Fuck them. So what happened to the country since 1914, 1913? Oh, well, the dollar lost 99% of its value. Ah, is anyone going to address these topics? Anyone at all? No, of course not. I mean, there's much more to say on that, but obviously I won't say it in the video and you won't say it in the comments because it just would just get the channel removed. So anyway, um, 
that's the issue that Disney is running into now. They they fundamentally are um, very bad people. So none of their story with belief systems not in accord with reality. So none of their stories make sense. You've got the uh, you've got the new mixed tribe empire or, or or new order whatever they're calling it versus the mixed tribe rebels. So what exactly are they fighting for? What specific way of life? They have a mixed group with various values that conflicts. So which one specific? We're fighting for democracy, but at least in the example on Earth is Zelensky shut down churches, the press, free speech, right of assembly. So you're, that's what you're fighting. What specific democratic values are you fighting for? We don't know. We're just we're just parroting, we're just parroting talking points. Yeah, maybe. I mean, stop that like that stimulus response and 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 like put a um, a ground fault interrupter so it, it bypasses that and goes into cognition. Like we start thinking about these things and go, oh, we're gonna stop the parroting. We're gonna just think about like what specifically are you fighting for? The right to shut down churches and shut down the press. So you don't have rights then. So you, like you're not a, I don't know what you are. You're just an authoritarian dictatorship. Um, I, yeah, I know Disney Star Wars is doing a lot of uh, heavy heavy lifting, lifting but um, Disney's not Disney. Disney's a much, much deeper entity. It's this this tip of this iceberg and it's just this, just staring into the abyss that is, is Disney. So in the um, Star Wars universe, if they defeat the Empire, they'll immediately turn on each other and fight each other for power because people aren't fungible because they have interests adverse to each other, but that doesn't fit the um, global homogenization worldview of these uh, corporate ND, NGO um, uh, demons. Obviously, Disney's using the Star Wars universe to push these beliefs, which is why uh, their cast looks like an American city and why the story of those American cities don't work. So, you know what? I'm going to cut it. Well, I'll just cut it short there. Stay on YouTube one more day. Get those $2 a day on YouTube. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you can check out the Odyssey and the Bit Shoot for videos um, that don't cut it short. And I will see you guys all next episode.